Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 3. In the last episode, everybody uh, everybody uh, woke to uh, the new school day after having uh, told uh, after having told uh, Chi Sensei, their homeroom teacher, about the abuse going on going on with Satoko at her home, courtesy of her uncle, hoping that uh, child welfare intervened and got her to safety. And then the following morning, they saw that Satoko had come to school. And she acted like as though nothing was wrong, even even claiming that nothing that nothing major nothing major really happened at the house. When everybody tried to inquire, well, hey, did anything happen yesterday? Because while well, they're all wondering if child welfare came or not, Satoko claimed that nothing major really happened. And so everybody, with some reservations, just decided to enjoy, try to enjoy Satoko's company like it was any other normal day, but then out of the blue, Satoko just exploded, frankly, for lack of a better, for lack of a better term. It's, it started with her having some kind of, of, of violent, sick, physical reaction. It was like, it was like, it was like she was getting sick or something. She threw up her entire lunch. It looked like as though she, she was she was sweating profusely. There might have been something wrong with her head, and then she started screaming. Uh, started screaming, crying for something to stop, and for her Nini, her brother. Everybody was, of course, scared and shocked and didn't know what to do. They tried to talk, they tried talking her down to no avail, but so it had to take Reina to basically get close to her and, and well. Give her a cool down hug in order to eventually calm her down. Everybody is everybody, of course, is has assumed that uh, that this extreme reaction that she had until she was until Reina was able to successfully cool her down might have been due to just built up stress from all the abuse that she's been suffering from her uncle. But with how sudden it was. And the and the violent physical reaction that she initially had, where she just basically vomited up her lunch and looked like she was sick. I I, I don't know. I'm not too knowledgeable about. I'm I'm not too knowledgeable about pent up stress to just being able to cause sudden violent reactions like that and and make you physically ill. It just it just seemed far too sudden for it. I think there would have been a lot more noticeable build up. So it just makes me wonder, was it really just stress, just spontaneously making her break on the spot right then and there out of nowhere, or was it something else in tandem in tandem with that? I don't know I don't know for sure, and it's frustrating as hell, but it's just how the whole thing played out is just honestly making me kind of suspicious as to whether or not there's something physically wrong with her. Cause it it just rubs me off as something more than just stress, just with how the whole thing started and ended so suddenly. Anyway, so after the after witnessing all this and everybody coming to the conclusion that it had to do with solely all the stress that uh, she's been that Satoko has been accumulating from the abuse from uh, her uncle, Keiichi snapped. He seemed to have snapped pretty fucking hard, and he's now basically gone homicidal, and is now con is now beginning to concoct a murder plan for Satoko's uncle in order to try to put a stop to the abuse himself, since he's pretty much uh, lost all all semblance of hope and trust in literally any other institution or person to be able to put a stop to the thing. So he's basically going to the most extreme solution. And just taking matters into his own hands, and of course I'm just sitting here, just pleading with the with the with this moron, don't do it. You're just gonna make everything fucking worse for everybody, especially Satoko. But well, we know that's we all that's, know that he's gonna do something really nasty, and it's just that's exactly what's going to happen. But yeah, he's going to apparently apparently try to kill Satoko's uncle during the Watanagashi festival. Now, how the hell he's gonna do that? Well, I'm sure we're gonna find out here once I hit continue. He'll eventually come up with something. 
But all I know is I, I I'm not looking forward to what's gonna. I'm not looking forward to this because it's just going to be a downward spiral for everybody, Satoko especially. But at this point, I don't think there's really anything that can stop Keiichi, short of divine intervention or something. I mean, it's not like I want Satoko's situation to continue, but resorting to fucking murder, that's just, that's going to, number one, that's going too far, all things considered, and it's just going to make everything so much worse. Anyway, I don't want to be a dead horse, so I'm just going to hit, hit continue, and we're going to just slowly work towards the conclusion of this murder plot together, I guess. Mion and the others, having to set up for the Watanagashi Festival or something, invited me along, but I refused. Of course I did. How could they be taking it easy and setting up for a festival in this situation? Mion had a lot of nerve. And you have lost all sem all semblance of perspective. The first thing I did when I got back was take a shower. You sure you want to take a shower? I thought that I thought that uh, getting getting uh, your plan all set up here and not wasting every single second was what mattered to you. Who cares if you stink? In fact, maybe your bo might. Serve as an effective distraction for the uncle while you're going to use your real trap or weapon or whatever in order to kill him. But I probably shouldn't give you ideas. Not because I wanted to wash off sweat. It was because I wanted to be even calmer. I already understood this, but killing that man would be so very easy. The really hard thing would be not getting arrested for it, so we could get our peaceful days back. As I thought about it, I realized it wasn't easy. Japan's police force have the highest arrest rate in the world. I would need to deceitfully pull off the perfect crime, and it couldn't be a half-hearted attempt. Still. It wasn't 100%. Even the best police force in the world couldn't have a 100% arrest rate. I read a lot of articles on trials of people brought up on false charges. They do a lot to determine whether they really were false accusations. But figuring out who the real criminal was is usually out of the question. And that meant perfect crimes did exist. In fact, perfect crimes were sort of like works of art. They could even be respected and revered. You just had to look at the, in, the, that, at the inunda inundation of mystery novels everywhere throughout history. They dealt with all sorts of difficult to solve incidents, involving secret rooms and alibis and stuff. But they all wanted to show one thing. They wanted to show the beauty of a perfect crime. There was something divine in the flawlessness of the word perfect. Yes, perfect crimes were skills of the gods. And in that sense, the serial freak deaths they were calling the curse of Orishiro Sama. I understood. They must have been the work of gods. Or really clever or really clever people. Don't sell humanity too don't sell humanity short now. Each one appeared to have been resolved, but they couldn't stop it from happening every year. Yeah. Skills belonging only to gods. Those are perfect crimes. And I'd be setting up my own crime before Urishirasama's series of perfect crimes four years in the running. If I were to put it boldly, I was challenging a god. Well, 
I won't, I hope for your sake then that Orishiro Sama's response isn't challenge accepted. Because you might not like the challenge. Foolhardiness would needed would be needed to make the decision. But I needed to be calm, cool, colder than ice to put that plan together. Kill him like a flame, but as systematic as ice. Starting now, I need to retain both of those ideas within me. Modeling my crime after a mystery novel wasn't actually a bad thing to focus on. Sometimes, kidnappings involving disturbing original methods that made it into the newspaper were used as a basis for novels after the person was arrested. Stuff like that made it into the news. Day and night, for a very long time, mystery novel authors polished and refined our most fantastic artistic crimes. Imitating that could be a shortcut to playing the perfect crime in a short period of time. Of course, I haven't read enough mystery novels to act all high and mighty about them. The one who really ki liked mystery novels was my mom. She'd read every well-known mystery novel from overseas, from past and present. Every time she watched, watched mystery shows, she would always criticize them as having cheap tricks or being poorly thought out. I wonder what the perfect crime would mean to her. And here is your first mistake, even con even considering asking uh, asking a mystery not a mystery enthusiast like your mother, hey, what would you consider the perfect crime? Because if there is because if there is by some by some chance that somebody finds some evidence that could point to you having been somewhere near the crime scene, people will start asking people related to you questions. And if your mom gets asked questions, well, maybe she might be inclined to uh, to to bring forth you. Asking about the perfect crime in mystery novels. Just... Again, why am I even giving you advice on this? If anything, it's pro if anything it'd, be, it'd be to everybody's benefit, Satoko's especially, if you were careless and somebody caught on to what you're up to before you were able to carry out your crime. What do I think the most well done perfect crime in all the mystery novels I've read is? Yeah. Well, you read quite a lot of them, right? I figure you might know a lot about them. It's more fun to read them to find out. If I told you all the tricks right off the bat, they'd be no fun anymore. Wasn't like I was asking for my own amusement. She was deflecting the question, so I would somehow butter her up first and draw out an answer. So, yeah. Of course. Well, well done mystery, well done mystery novels. Yeah. They all have a unique charm to them, so it's hard to say which is the most interesting. You'd really have to force me to pick one. I didn't want to know which novels you like. I want to know about the trick that made you the most surprised. If it was really a perfect trick, the detectives wouldn't be able to solve the case, though. That was true. Then there'd be no point. Mystery novels are enjoyable because of the process of the mysteries getting solved. If it was unsolvable, it wouldn't make a very good topic for a novel. I disagree. 
I think that some of the best horror titles often can get away with leaving a few big questions unanswered because it's the unknown that could draw out the most horror depending on the context because your imagination would basically set the limits on some on some of said horrors so yeah there are instances where having some mystery having some unsolved mysteries would i think be beneficial to a story it it it, it depends on the story and the context Soka. i get it yeah you're right if the main character can't solve it, it wouldn't be much of a story, huh? Was I being too simplistic? A mystery novel was basically a game. They were written so that you could get to the goal, so that you would so that you could solve them. But I couldn't use something so optimistic. It needed to be the be-all, end-all of tricks so that we could, without doubt, return to our old lives. By the way, Keiichi, Do you understand that truly perfect crimes don't even become stories? Well, she's right. Otherwise, they wouldn't be perfect, now would they? Mom looked at me intellectually and grinned impishly. I've never gotten to read it, but apparently one, one time a long time ago, Mom had written her own mystery novel and submitted it for some mystery novel award. Apparently, she was really into it. Don't even become stories. What does that mean? What do you think it means, man? Keiichi? Keiichi, what are the essential parts of a story? A beginning, a middle, and an end? You're just looking at the structure of a story. But there's more to it than that. Correct. Beginning, of course, is especially important. If there is no beginning, then the story never starts. Well, I think that goes without saying. Well, yeah. If nothing happened, nothing would begin. Right. Nothing happened, so there wouldn't even be an incident. Detectives wouldn't be called, so there wouldn't be any mystery. There would be no mystery, so there would be no solution. In other words, it would be the perfect crime. Okay, okay, Keiichi, I got an idea. Use witchcraft, obtain godlike powers, and erase the beginning of this chapter from existence. Then you'd be able to create your perfect crime because, well, there'd be no beginning. Uh, Wait. Just wait. Wait a second. Could you explain that again? My mom just told me something absurd. And she was saying it so smoothly too, so I kind of tuned her out, but... She said something extremely important just now. It's not really that difficult to understand. The incident just has to never come to light, that's all. Just has to never come to light. For example, how about this? Say there's an old man living deep in a forest nobody goes into. Uh-huh. And one day, the old man gets killed by an axe. And 
Hmm. Let's say the criminal was the old man's son. おじいさんの家に来て一緒にお酒を飲んでいたんだけど、ちょっと喧嘩になって殺してしまった。He went to the old man's house and they were drinking together, but they got into a fight and he killed him. What an extremely cheap plot. Life is full of cheap plots, Keiichi. It was an impulsive crime without a bit of planning. It was pretty far from a perfect crime. でも、ケイチ。But ケイチ。そこはとてもとても深い森の中の一軒家なの。The house was really, really deep in this forest. 普段は絶対に誰も訪れない深い山奥の深い深い森の中。So、deep in the mountains that nobody would ever go out that far. さて、殺した息子は町に帰ってきてこう言うの。Then his son would go back to town and say, おじいさんは元気だったって。That the old man was doing fine. それのどこが完全犯罪なの What about that as a perfect crime? Simple. If nobody has any reason to go to be suspicious about what the son has said and go all the way into deep into the forest to go visit the old man, then nobody would know. Anything about what could have taken place there. Don't give people a reason to look into something, they'll never look into it. And given the location that's so far and out of the way, and not easily within re of reach, or at least easily within interest of people trying to reach, of wanting to reach it, then, well, yeah, basically that. Keiichi. Keiichi. This is the case. おじいさんが殺されているのが見つかって初めて木を迎えるのよ。This incident would only begin when it was found out that the old man was killed. もしもこの後、誰もおじいさんの家を訪れなかったら、永久に木は訪れない。If nobody ever visited the old man's house after that, that beginning would never occur. The beginning would never occur. だからつまり、物語は始まらない。So、basically the story wouldn't start. 事件が発覚しないから探偵も呼ばれない。The incident wouldn't come to light and they wouldn't call it and call in detectives. そもそも誰も不審に思わないから謎も起こらない。And nobody would be suspicious in the first place, so there'd be no mystery. おじいさんは今日も一人でのんびり森の奥で暮らしているんだろうね。They'd think the old man was still living by himself deep in the forest. で、お空におじいさんの顔が浮かんで、ジエンド。And the old man's face would appear in the sky, and that would be it. どうこんな感じで。Something like that, you know. す、すごいじゃないか That, that's amazing! それ、ちゃんとしたトリックだよ That's a pretty great trick! That seems like a bit of an odd thing to say about this sort of thing. Don't you think, Keiichi? I don't know. I would kind of pick up, I would kind of raise my eyebrow a bit at that. If I was in your mother's position. But it wouldn't be a novel. Mystery novels are for entertainment, after all. They can't be instruction manuals for perfect crimes. I was trying hard to talk cheerfully to fool her. But inside I was excited. Special tools, strange geography, mysterious drugs, traps involving huge sums of cash. None of them were needed for perfect crimes. The important thing was that there wasn't a beginning. As long as the incident didn't come to light, it would be fine. Speaking broadly, if I could kill him without anyone finding out, and, and dispose of the corpse somewhere no one could find, it would basically already be a perfect crime. People would probably just assume that he was demoned away or something during the, the festival, so your timing would be ideal too if you could somehow pull that off. Of course, if someone up and vanished one day, all of a sudden people would get suspicious. 
but that didn't apply to this man. Last year, after their aunt died, he ran away from the village in fear of Oishiro-sama. When the night of Watanagashi came around again, everyone would have to think that he ran away in fear again. I mean, he had been living with a lover of his own in of his in town. No matter what it, felt, what it felt like when he vanished, no one would be suspicious. Except one problem I just now thought about. Your friends have already seen the murderous look in your eyes before you left school that day, so... If something happens to him, your friends might start to wonder... If you might have anything, if you might have had anything to do with it, especially depending on your behavior after it's discovered that after it's discovered that he's gone, you've you've already kind of screwed yourself in that respect. If you stop and think about it, shame that you're not shame that you're not like Spock, huh, Keiichi? People hated him, after all. No one would care where he went if he disappeared. When I thought about it like that, it got easier and easier to imagine killing him. There was no point in thinking inside my house anymore. I left, getting my bike out of the garage. For now, it didn't matter where I was going. I just rode through the wind, trying to calm my excitement by feeling the cool air on my body. Also, I just now thought, yeah, another thing. You refuse to come to the Watangashi Festival. That'd be another thing that your friends could possibly think about when it comes to thinking about your strange behavior ever since Satoko's episode in school. And then, the subsequent disappearance of the uncle. So that's another thing that people who were paying attention to you that day could be suspicious about. Where I'd kill him. How I'd do it. What time. And how to dispose of the corpse. If I just had those four things, I could get a good plan going. I was so surprised at how little there was to decide that I shivered. I've been completely prepared to build this humongous plan over a really long period of time. But if I could just get these little things in order, I could put it into motion. Today was Saturday. I would have to kill him on the night of Watanagashi. So as long as I was standing in for Oishirasama, I only had 24 hours remaining. Satoko, just hang on for 24 more hours. I can't even imagine having to suffer through even more. But please hold on out for a little longer. You really need to stop and ask yourself... Would Satoko want you to do this? And better, and another thing. How do you think she would react to you if she found, if she ever found out what you did? I don't think it'd be, I don't think it'd be a very pleasant reaction at all. Like you're, you're doing this for Satoko's sake. So you, but you haven't yet to ask yourself these two important questions: what does what does Satoko want, and how would she react if she found out what you did, what you're planning to, or or, or, or rather, what you're planning to do? I know you can't even last another second. I know that, but please. Just hold out. Your Nini will save you for sure. Outside, it was still early enough for the Kikadas to be crying. Early afternoon, 
even it was still a long way off. I looked at the sky. At some point, it had gotten cloudy. Come to think of it, as I left the house, I heard on the TV that the weather forecast was calling for a chance of rain on Sunday. The sky was the color of lead. Seems like a nice shade of blue to me. If I heard a little bit of thunder, I definitely have expected a sudden evening shower. My first destination was school. Before explaining why I was going there, I needed to explain what method for killing that man I had decided upon. I decided that the most suitable death, the one I needed to give him, was the same as last year's curse. The same as the punishment their aunt had received. Being beaten to death. <laughs> you're just, you're really just going to make that man suffer, aren't you? Not that he doesn't deserve to suffer, but I mean, I've already voiced my objections here to you even even thinking about killing the guy at all. Wouldn't beating him to death be somewhat unreliable? You may think that stabbing him with a blade would be more reliable. But this was something I had chosen after a lot of thought. You just needed to think realistically. The law. It prohibited carrying any blades longer than 10 centimeters, I think. So the blades available to me, though long enough, were limited to things shorter than a ruler. You can probably understand how tricky it would be with such a short reach to go up against an opponent that might fight back. In that case, using a weapon with reach would be far more effective. It depends on how you use the weapon, that can, that can determine its effectiveness. But look at me, I'm already breaking the rule I set for myself, giving you, advi giving you advice on murder. It might not have the same precision, but you just had to hit the guy until you killed him. Both options resulted in death. With that settled, was the weapon with the most terrifying force behind it that is also easy to carry around? By this point, you should immediately think of a metal baseball bat. Yeah, I had a feeling that it was going to come to this. I don't need to explain how terrifying a metal baseball bat can be as a weapon. I think a wooden bat might actually be more terrifying because I think technically wooden bats are more st are are more sturdy. They don't bend as easily as metal. Because I think because I think metal bats are typically made out of aluminum and that's not exactly the most durable type of metal there is. It can be it can bend easily with enough force. A bat, a wooden bat, though, that's a different matter. It's more solid. A special note is, a special note is the fact that you can carry one around in raw daylight and not be thought of as suspicious. Just those two points would have been enough to choose a metal bat for my weapon. But there was one more reason for choosing a metal bat in particular. I will speak about it later. Why not now? It's not like as though we're in a rush. We're not we're in a rush necessarily, right? After school that Saturday, my classmates were still having fun playing in the schoolyard. I could show up there and it would be the same as always. So nobody will think I'm suspicious. Getting my hands on the weapon without looking suspicious was actually a factor I couldn't ignore. I didn't normally play baseball, 
So if I went to a sports store looking for a metal bat, it would definitely be suspicious. I can't let there be a beginning to the story. So I need to be really careful even about that. That left school. At a location at which my appearance wouldn't be suspicious, I would acquire the weapon. I checked inside the classroom through the window, but of course there was nobody there. The only students who would stay in there were me and the others when doing club activities. Without us, the classroom after school was just an empty, unused room. Without glancing around nervously, as if I'd just gone to get something I'd forgotten, I casually went in the entrance. It looked like the teacher was busy with paperwork in the teacher's lounge. I didn't see her in the hallway. Naturally, yet quick, uh, quickly as a shadow, I entered the classroom. The empty room was full of a strange, stagnant air that you couldn't feel normally. An empty classroom, with nobody here. Maybe while no one was around, the desks creep about of their own accord, licking the floors clean of dirt. You have a strange imagination, Keiichi. But then again, we've already we've already established that as early as chapter one, didn't we? If I suddenly stepped into a place like that, would the desks, in their surprise, fly at me, crush my bones, and eat me alive? That's ridiculous. I felt regret wasting viable thinking time on stupid delusions. The students' lockers were lined up in the backs of the classroom. The one I was looking for wasn't my own. It was a forbidden locker. One I had accidentally discovered one day. S Satoshi's locker. You're going to use his bat for this. Is that, the, is that that reason? Is it the fact that it's a Satoshi's bat? That, that's the reason. That's the one other reason that you're going to, that you were planning to talk about later. It's because it was Satoshi. One of the kids this man himself abused at one point. And Satoko's former, well, former Nini. That would be the tool to do him in. That's what you're going for, isn't it? Here it is. Hojo. This has to be it. If one person has one locker, then why would only Satoko have two? I may have fuss about it once. After that, I learned it was Satoshi's locker, and he had the same last name as her. But of course, even though it was a locker for a student no longer here, looking inside it was still a, looking inside it was still a shameless act. But one time, I let my curiosity get the better of me and took a peek inside. Inside it was average and worthless. At the time, I hadn't been interested, so until now I'd forgotten what had been in it. But now that I had, dare I say it, awakened, I remembered the thing that had been there. Scrape. I opened the locker. And a stench of mold and sweat wa wafted out, like it wafted it out, like a gym storehouse that hadn't been cleaned in weeks. My face puckered up at the stench, but I looked for it. Yes, Satoshi was on Coach's baseball team. Inside the locker was a Hinamizawa fighter's uniform, and it. 
the one Satoshi used. The metal bat. You know, I just now had a random thought. Shion clearly liked Satoshi. And Satoshi was on the baseball team. And Shion is what is basically supposed to be the manager of said baseball team. Satoshi disappeared a year ago. And around the same time a year ago, Shion stopped attending, match, uh, stopped attending matches and stuff regularly. Maybe the reason she stopped doing that is because the boy that she likes, one of the players uh, on the team, Satoshi, disappeared. And with him gone... She had no little to no. She had basically no real reason to, in her mind anyway, to attend to attend activities with the, with the baseball team. That would explain that mystery. Yes, this was the reason I wanted to choose this bat. This murder would be carried out by me, but this wasn't originally my role. It was Satoshi's. But I would stand in for him and call myself Satoko's Nini. It, it was one of the rules for standing in for him. I reached for the metal bat and grasped it firmly. It was light. And yet, its tip had enough heft in it. Enough to easily imagine the horror if I brought it down with all my might. Satoshi. I'll give you one last chance to save your sister. Lend me your strength. You're a coward, but I will stand in for you. So if you still care even a little bit about her, you will. Lend me your strength. There's no more suitable weapon in the world for putting that man to death than your bat. Now, I just need to figure out where to hide it. Tomorrow, before the act, I would just stop by the school and grab it. Oh, so it is technically just, it is technically the same day as it was last chapter, isn't it? I thought it was already the day of the Watanagashi Festival. Because I couldn't ignore the possibility someone would see me bringing it home and think it was strange. But if I left it here, there wouldn't be a problem. Plus, tomorrow was Sunday. Not only that, it was the day of the biggest festival in the whole village. Nobody would be coming to school. As far as you know, I left out the entrance and went over to a construction vehicle parked nearby. We've been warned by our teacher not to touch it just for laughs, so none of the kids would come near the vehicle either. They wouldn't, because if, if she found out they touched it, they'd be in huge trouble. I quietly hid it in the shadow of the vehicle. The chances of someone operating the vehicle tomorrow were slim to none. Because tomorrow was Sunday. Government workers had the day off. And, from what my classmates had said, the thing had been left here for years now. Machines that hadn't been moved in years. You can't just suddenly start them up again. So I was almost def almost definitively fine in this case. The sunlight was piercingly hot. My head grew faint for a moment. Had the heat been this harsh for the entire day? A moment of dulled thoughts like this was a moment of carelessness. I gave myself a couple of hits in the head, then looked around warily. Okay. Next. How to dispose of the corpse?
Well, we got the bat. On to the next step, I guess. Disposing of the corpse. The ultimate way of not creating a beginning was to not let the corpse be found. It was even more important than killing him. Thinking on it vaguely, the first thing that came to mind was the swamp. Onigafuchi, the dreadful bondless swamp revered even now, that appeared in the legends of Onigafuchi Village. Yes, the swamp called Onigafuchi was here first, and then the village took its name to become Onigafuchi Village. In other words, this swamp was the origin of Onigafuchi Village. No one, no matter who it was, would float back to the surface of this bottomless swamp. Everyone would be swallowed down into the land of the demons below the earth. That was how the stories went. If I was trying to copy Orishiro-sama's curse, then I felt that theory demanded I discard the remains and the weapon into the swamp. But, they may have said it's bottomless, but I didn't actually know. And people say large creatures like humans produce a lot of gas when they rot, granting a lot of buoyancy. It was why using fairly heavy objects to hold people down didn't work. Come to think of it, with the curse the year before last, Rikichan's mother drowned herself in this swamp. And the criminal behind the dismemberment went missing the year of the first curse, too. It was rumored he tried to discard the body in the swamp, and accidentally drowned in it. I never heard of the corpse coming back up, or them finding it. Then, shouldn't I choose to discard the corpse there, too? I could discard the weapon there. And then, for example, if her uncle came out on a motorcycle and attacked, it would be convenient to get rid of the bike, too. I knew that Satoko's uncle generally used a motorcycle for transportation. But, as for the corpse... After a lot of worrying, I decided not to discard the corpse in the swamp. The drowning suicide and accident were both rumors. Nobody knew if they'd actually happened. There was no lack of false rumors about the drowning suicide anyway, and whoops. And it was possible the murderer had drowned there and was still on the run. That meant no one had ever confirmed a corpse being dropped in there and then not coming back up. Then what would I do with the body? I thought it might be interesting to go with the first incident. Cut him, in, cut him to pieces and hide him. But the preparation and work for dismembering a human body would be difficult given the amount of time I had. With that out of the question, I arrived at the conclusion to go with the more orthodox method of burying the body. Then where I would bury it was a question related to where I would kill him. Of course, I wanted to keep my time in proximity to the body at a minimum. With that in mind, I would want to dig the hole to dump the body in beforehand and to make the location of the act and the hole close together. The choice of where the plan were to plan the crime that I need to be absolutely careful and thorough with. It had to be somewhere nobody would witness it, and a place with hiding places for a sneak attack. I could dig a hole for the body right there. I go over the possibilities in my head of the various destinations her uncle would head to from Satoko's house. I imagined a map of the area in my head. And then I found a place that fulfilled those conditions so easily it was almost unbelievable. 
a bit of a back road that went through the woods. I didn't think her uncle would go deeper into the mountains of Yaguchi on, on a whim. If he was going somewhere, he'd pass through these woods first. And nobody used this back way unless they had something to do at Satoko's house or one or two other places. This path was fantastically ideal, as few people used it. I would wait for him in, in these woods. Would an ambush actually be possible? I went into the trees and tried really hiding myself in a few places. It was extremely quiet. My senses could be sharpened here to their maximum amount. I didn't know where he'd come, but I'd wait right here for Satoko's uncle. I actually had some trouble coming to that decision. The question arose of whether I should somehow call the man out. Was there a risk I'd be taking by luring him here? That man made Satoko do all the shopping and errands. He seldom left on his own business. He wouldn't leave. Unless I worked out a plan to force him to, would he? Most likely. That was the question. Tomorrow was the Watanagashi Festival. Would he go out for the festival, or would he stay inside? If he stayed inside, how would I drag him out of his house? That's right. Wouldn't he make Satoko go to the festival? Satoko would go to the festival. Meanwhile, I would call the man. This is the Okinomiya police station. We had the young lay from your house. Could you come and pick her up immediately? It didn't even have to be the police. This was the, this is the clinic. The young lay from your house has been injured. Please come and pick her up. Yes, that would work too. If I claimed to be the police or the hospital, told him to come and then hung up on him, he'd rush there trying to figure out what was going on wouldn't he? Unless he really, unless he really, unless he just decided to be a piece of shit about it and just be like, eh, whatever. I'll just make her, I'll just make her work harder when she finally gets back here on her own. Unless she doesn't get back here fast enough for me. But just the other day, he was visited by the probation officer. He wouldn't suddenly grumble about having to get his niece and not go. It would look like child neglect. True. I forgot about that for a sec. The man had no sk skills useful around the house. Satoko, his slave, was an essential part of his daily life. Conclusion. If he went out to the festival, I would attack him here on his way there or back. If he didn't, I would lure him out by phone. If luring him out by phone was my first step, I need to be sure Satoka would go to the festival, leaving the house. It would be convenient if I could make Mion take Satoko to the festival. She said her aunt was a, was a district welfare officer. In other words, an ally to the probation officer. If I somehow incited Mion to take Satoko to the festival with her, well, being who she was, she'd use that fact and get her there. Satoko should just take a break and have fun at the festival with everyone. She should have a good time. Reminisce on her former peaceful days. And when she went home, everything would be over. 
Yeah, that would be the best outcome. With that decided, I need to dig a hole somewhere in the woods to hide the body. So it wouldn't stand out, so it wouldn't be found. Some place nobody would see me while I was completely exposed as I buried the corpse. I'd wanted to be close to the scene of the crime, but it naturally grew farther away. Deep in the bosom of the black forest. The voices of Higurashi were the only sounds here, informing me that people shouldn't indiscreetly set foot in this place. Digging a hole? Huh. Digging a hole with so many tree roots crawling around the ground would be far more difficult than I'd envisioned. I snuck a guardian spade out here in my bag, but that wouldn't be enough. Still, as I looked into various approaches, I managed to find a place I could dig into. Tomorrow I'd bring a real shovel from the storeroom at home. I'd manage with that. I wondered how big a hole would have to be to fit a human all the way into it. I probably had to dig pre pretty deep down. But if I but if I was slipshod in those in these efforts, I'd let a beginning occur. I absolutely couldn't allow that. Use any amount of time you need to. I mustn't spare any effort to utterly erase him. I glanced at my wristwatch. It was a little past six. This was probably I was all I was going to get done here for today. I really wanted to dig the hole in advance tonight, even if it got dark out, but Mom would be upset if I stayed out that late. It wouldn't be good to come off as suspicious to my parents. I need to go back home and give Mion a call soon. I need to get her to promise to Toko to take her to take her by tonight. After that, today would be done. Done. Would it be though? Was this really everything I could do to prepare right now? I decide where to kill him. I decide how to kill him. I decide, of course, how to dispose of the body. I didn't decide on a time, but I would play that by ear. I didn't have a way to decide that. Was that really all? Was this really all right? Have I overlooked anything? Would this really go how I planned? After all this, worries started welling up one after another. It was only natural I'd be anxious. This would be the first and last big job of my lifetime. I could not allow failure. And I had no experience as this was my first time. I didn't have the know-how, the knack, so it was only natural I'd be anxious. The dark clouds of unease told me doing nothing would be the easiest way. A truly pathetic suggestion this late in the game. Have you forgotten how miserable Satoko looked? From the outside, it may have looked like I was resolute, but deep in my heart, my knees were shaking loudly. I've never actually won a single fight to my satisfaction. Could I really kill someone? I may have been planning an ambush, but my enemy was large and far older than me. He had a scary face, and he looked like he was well accustomed to fighting. Duh, duh, did he now? I never really got a good look at the guy. 
could I have? All the pieces before and after the murder. All the pieces before and after the murder were perfectly planned. But was the actual murder the most important part? What unsettled me the most? All my preparations. All my perfectly concealed machinations. If I didn't successfully murder him, they amounted to, they amounted to nothing. Damn it. After coming this far, you're pathetic, Keiji Maybara. If you start having these kinds of second thoughts, your ulterior motive will be obvious. Let's go home. Go home and calm your mind. Tomorrow will be a juncture in your life. The likes of which graduation, employment, marriage, and childbirth couldn't hold a candle to. I suppose not. A day of murder. To kill someone. For someone else's sake. With that day behind us. We would take it back again. Those mild, spring-like days we never thought would stop. Those safe, peaceful, fun times. I pedaled my bicycle hard to get back home. I felt somehow unsteady, like my body and soul weren't in alignment. A subtle shift between where the tips of my hands and feet really were and where I felt them to be. My vision was a little distant and narrow, as if the great barrier I risked my future life on had nothing to do with me. An unreal sensation. How could I put, how could I put it? Everything was so far away. Fine. Feel your unease permeate you, Keiichi Mebara. If thou turn your timidity into meticulousness and allow you to act with greater caution, then it's actually an important motion to feel. This feeling I had never went away that night. It's the first time I'd be calling Mion's house. I searched for her in the phone book the school gave me, then dialed a short phone number, the, unique, the kind unique to remote places. It was around dinner time. She would probably be home. But just as I started to think nobody would respond, someone finally picked up the receiver. Hello, this is Sonazaki. Oh, I'm sorry for calling so late at night. Um, is this Mion? Huh? May I ask who's calling? You don't recognize his voice? It's me, Keiichi. Ah. Oh, Kei-chan. It's pretty late. What's up? She seemed to be in a weirdly good mood, and she drew her syllables out. I would have thought that you'd recognize his voice immediately on the phone. I was going to ask him, are you actually Xion? But, well, you would know what his voice sound, would sound like too, so... Never, yeah. I, I, I thought I had, so, I thought I had something, but I ultimately don't think I have anything at all. So ignore me. Right. It's the night before tomorrow's festival, so she's probably for family having some drinks. Oh, well, if she's drunk, that would explain it. Sorry for the late call. Do you have time right now? Sure. What is it? It's about Satoko. I heard her draw in a small breath on the other end. 
大変なことになっちゃったね。サトコ、she's in a pretty bad spot。大丈夫かな ?I hope she's okay。The scent of sake had completely disappeared from her voice. She can't be okay. You saw it too, you saw it too didn't you? Well, of course she did. She was right in the classroom with you. What she was like? She was completely worn out from all the abuse. We failed her all this time, and now she's become like that. We didn't fail her. Everyone tried their hardest to help her. But we didn't come up with anything, and we couldn't save her. In the end, We couldn't do anything about it, and now she's become like that. So, Dane. I guess you're right. All I did was watch after all. So well. At least. Can we at least let her have fun for one night? Huh? Let her have fun? She's been so bad lately, you understand. That's why. That's why. I want you to take her to the Watanagashi Festival tomorrow. I don't mind. But why? Why? I want to give her a breather, at least for the festival night, you know? I just had a thought. If, you, if she actually agrees and she manages to bring Satoko to the festival and then she and then she never once else sees, well, you never showing up, they're going to start wondering... Why are you not here to help Satoko have a good night? Uh, even though you went to the trouble of actually calling a favor for, for me on to help get her to the festival. Where were you during all of this if you were so concerned about her? Yet another th yet another loose thread that people could fo that people could follow and po and follow right back to you, my friend. Even if it's just one night. If she can get away from her evil uncle, then I think she'll be happy, even if it's only for a little while. Yes, but why? Why? Why what? I was having a little difficulty as understanding what Mion was asking me. Why? Well. I mean, why don't you bring her, Kei-chan? Good question. Why do you need to ask me to do it? Neon was persistent about odd things. No. Maybe it's better to say that she was sharp. I, well... I actually have something to do tomorrow. I can't make it to the festival. And this is yet another nail that you've get that another thread, another nail that you could that you could give to people, that could, you know, they could use to to uh, sniff out your suspicious activities. You really should have thought this. You really should have thought ahead a bit more on this. About the possibility of what she could have asked, on what she could have possibly, on what she could have asked you, and then have some pre-prepared -pre answers accordingly. So I wanted you to take Satoko there for me. Something to do? It's nothing major. 
I'll probably finish quickly, but I might not be able to meet up with you all tomorrow. I think she knows that something's fishy about this. At least I hope she does, and that she uh, decides to do something about it before you, well, do something. Nah, hey, Mion. Could I leave Satoko to you, just for tomorrow night? Mion took a long time to give her reply. I got the feeling that Mion had been acting weird for a while now. Like she was flustered by emotions or something. Yeah. No. <laughs> huh? Was that a sob? Mion! Are you crying? I said no. I don't want to. I don't want you to push this onto someone like me. I, I'm not trying to push anything onto you. It was, it's just for tomorrow night. That was a lie! What? Mion. What was she talking about? I think she is. Maybe she's caught on to you plotting something nefarious. <laughs> Saying it's just for the night of Watanagashi. <laughs> and then it was forever. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> But I guess we're even, huh? Did I just forget to read a line? Ah, oh, whatever. I couldn't couldn't keep the promise I made with you. I left her alone. Alone all this time. I had no idea what to say to that. Mion was clearly not talking to someone other than me. I didn't know who. All I could do was listen to her in a daze. <laughs> You never came back after that. And now you called me again to push her on to me. You're so unfair. Hey, Satoshi-kun. Aren't you? Satoshi? Satoshi thrust Satoko onto you at one point, too. Interesting. Mion, what are you talking about? When I said her name, whatever spell was on Mion was released. Uh I'm sorry. It's nothing. It's just that I got a phone call a lot like, like, like the one you're making now. A long time ago. Was it from Satoshi? Mion didn't answer. I could hear her sobs coming from the receiver. Go, Sorry. I think I'm still a little tipsy. 
I got all weirdly emotional. <laughs> Sorry, I probably scared you. I won't lie, I am a bit concerned right now. I had no idea how it happened. But I was pretty sure that last year, on this very day, Satoshi had called me on and told her to bring Satoko to the festival. I wonder... No, can't be it. I was just thinking. Since it seems like as though uh, Keiichi is on the path to repeating some strange actions that Satoshi apparently took before he vanished. Maybe Satoshi had something to do with um, the murders and, murder and, murders and disappearances of last year's Watangashi Festival. That being his aunt and, well, his own disappearance. But then I remembered, well, they found some kind of delinquent who claimed responsibility for the whole thing, so... Yeah. Apparently a, de a delinquent did it, so... Yeah. I thought I, I thought I found... I thought I, I thought that I found something that might give some very po shocking insight into what may have happened last year but I think I read a little too much into it and not remembered about the delinquent, so once again, ignore me. And when she asked why he needed her to do it, he replied the same way I just did. Satoshi, Satoshi didn't go to the festival, did he? Yeah. He said he had something to do, and couldn't make it. And he told me to take Satoko there in his place. At the time, Satoshi said it too, didn't he? That he'd leave Satoko to you. Yeah. He did. Just for tomorrow night. The way you said it was just like how he did. <laughs> I just got a little upset, caught up in a memory and all. I didn't expect this. Satoshi had given her the exact same phone call one year ago today. Mion kept going after that. That I, that he, was lying. That he told her it would only be for the night of the festival. I get it. A few days later, Satoshi, he disappeared. Disappeared might have been a rather vague way to put it. Whether he ran away or not, Satoshi left, abandoning Satoko. So. Yes. He didn't transfer or run away from home. He disappeared. And then, an idea far more indistinct than even fog crossed my mind. Satoshi made exactly the same phone call as me last year. Why would Satoshi make the exact same call? If, in the truest sense, he made the same exact same phone call as I am right now, then just like I proposed a couple minutes ago, maybe... He decided to take some matters into his own hands like you are right now and deal with an abuser in the most direct way. Once again, like what you're doing right now. But they apparently already caught the perpetrator. And 
So, just based on that, that can't be it. Then the incident where their aunt was beaten to death. That's... Could it... Satoshi. Was... Satoshi. Huh? What was that? Last year. Satoko had been constantly abused by her uncle's wife, their aunt, too. Her aunt abused her the most. And on that night, in the name of Orishirasama's curse, she was taken from this world. If I thought about that, everything made perfect sense, didn't it? Last year, Satoko's aunt was beaten to death, wasn't she? Would it be impossible for Satoshi to have? No, but that would mean. But then, Satoshi, he was a coward who abandoned Satoko and ran away, wasn't he? How could Satoshi resolve himself to kill a person? To save Satoko. It was unthinkable. Well, it's clearly it clearly is thinkable, because you've been thinking about doing the same exact thing the whole fucking day. I I actually considered that as well. Though it though it'd mean be mean to Satoshi. A few days later, he disappeared on Satoko's birthday. When I first heard it, I flew into a rage. What a cruel day to have run away on. But now that I thought about it like this, the story changed completely. Satoshi had probably even been had been even less calm than I was now. He was her big brother, related by blood, watching his little sister be abused day in and day out. Maybe that's why he couldn't keep calm. And now is why. The corpse of their aunt, being to death, was so easily discovered. Satoshi lost himself in his anger and hadn't hidden the corpse. He permitted a beginning to occur. If the police conducted a full-blown investigation, it was easy to imagine they wouldn't take long to pin down Satoshi as the culprit. Satoshi. He wished for a return to peaceful days with Satoko, and though he achieved it for a time... He had been steadily driven into a corner. And then, he wanted to at least hold out until Satoko's birthday. But finally, they nailed him. At the time, Satoshi had been carrying the savings he'd amassed to buy Satoko a giant stuffed animal for a birthday present. He would buy the stuffed animal as her gift and then get caught. Or he could use the money and disappear. That was the choice he had been forced to make. And he decided not to make Satoko the sister of a murderer. Then how's that explain to the delinquent? Well, that, well, then again, thinking about it now, I mean, the guy, the delinquent in question was a drug user, if I recall correctly. So, maybe the guy was on some serious drugs at the time, and he was just perfectly fine admitting to a crime he didn't actually commit. Because, well, he had, he'd had no log logical reason to, because his brain wasn't functioning correctly anyway. And if that's the case, then... That would mean that they that they caught the wrong culprit for that incident. And that maybe 
Keiichi might be onto something here. And that would be... a really sad thought, honestly. If this is how things actually went down. Because, I mean... What a tragedy. Your own, your own older brother, basically taking matters to, into his own hands in such an extreme way to basically kill your abusive aunt, but is then forced to either allow himself to get caught and then have you, by, 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 by relation to him, be seen as the sister of a murderer, or force himself to disappear in hopes that, well, he's never found and, well you would maybe have some sort of chance of being able to live a normal life without that kind of reputation hanging over your shoulders. But even then, if there was, if the police could find evidence that could link to Satoshi being the actual culprit, there'd still be an investigation. There'd probably still be warrants put out for his arrest and all that stuff. Information like that would probably reach the public sphere in some capacity. That even if they couldn't prove that he is a murderer, he'd be suspected of having done something like that. And the suspicion alone in a lot of cases is enough to generate a negative reputation towards people related to the suspicious individual in question. And in the end, it would more or less essentially have the same outcome. Than if they did get caught. I don't know. Something about this just doesn't quite add, add up to me. If that was the case, then it must be an unspeakably bitter decision. All that money he'd saved wanting to see Stoko happy, he had to use it to make her sad. And he used the savings and disappeared. Tokyo, if the rumors were true. Was that how Satoshi disappeared? I. I don't know. That Oushi guy seems to think that way, though. Ushi. He had been slowly driven to a corner by that repulsive man's pig-headed pursuit. Hattie, excuse me. The circumstantial evidence is all there. But I think your deduction is wrong. He caught some lowlife somewhere in the prefecture, and he apparently turned himself in for the crime. Never mind, he turned himself in. That was right. The deviant had confessed, and the incident was solved. They said he really was just a crazy person, and that he had no ties to Hinamizawa. And no relationship with Satoshi, of course. I mean I, I mean, I have a pretty hard time believing the guy would lie in Satoshi's place. You couldn't just arbitrarily decide like that. You'd never know where or how humans are tied together. If that guy took the blame, then it was the perfect crime. Of course, if it really was a perfect crime, there would have been no reason for Satoshi to vanish. Plus, I don't think Satoshi had the kind of money to run away. That, w that day, he withdrew all his savings. No matter who I tell this to, nobody believes me, but... That stuffed animal he said he was buying for Satoko. It was gone from the display, sold. Really? It must 
have been Satoshi. If that's true, then if he did buy the stuffed animal and yet ended up disappearing anyway, he'd have no money at all to really even try to do that. Which would then mean he must have disappeared for some altogether different reason than just wanting to run away. So what is that reason then if that's what happened? What made him vanish? Wait a minute. If he didn't use the money to flee and bought the stuffed animal instead, he would have gone back to Satoko, wouldn't he? It seems unbelievable he'd buy it and then disappear without having given it to, given it to her. Yeah. So, now I don't know what happened. It would be one thing if he had the money, but if he used all his savings on it, he'd be totally broke. You can't live a life on the run without money in this world. I didn't get it. After all that, I was understanding Satoshi less and less. The two of us fell silent. I couldn't even remember how we even got on to on this topic. <laughs> Sorry. I think we got off topic. It's Toko, right? Don't worry. I actually already invited her. Well, then this whole phone call was just pointless and really d did just serve to possibly give another thread leading to you. Another trail of breadcrumbs. Huh? You serious? When everyone went to the shrine to prepare for the festival, we started talking about getting Satoko to the festival itself. And you would have found out about, uh, about all this had you actually decided to go with them, but no, you had to prepare your perfect crime. So then I used the phone at the assembly hall to invite her. Her uncle was acting distant and didn't seem to care at all. But in any case, we got the okay from him. We decide, all, we decide to all meet up and go together tomorrow. You okay with that? Satoshi? Stupid. I'm not Satoshi. I was a little relieved. I hadn't needed to make the phone call. Satoko had already been invited to the festival. And not in a way that smelled of blood. A way to leave her uncle alone to create time for me to kill him. They purely wanted Satoko to enjoy herself. So they invited her. In the end, it was the same. But I was happy for that slight difference. Sorry. I guess I didn't need to call then. First yesterday, now today. Sorry for uh, saying such weird things. Just forget about it. No, I'm the one who should apologize. Losing it like that isn't like me. I'm really sorry. We apologize to each other for a little bit. Alright, I'll be going now. Good night. What did you have to do? You better think of something. As if interrupting our parting words, Mion struck straight where it hurt. Satoshi 
Or is it like with Satoshi where you can't say? Baka. Stupid. I keep telling you, I'm not Satoshi. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know that. I deflected her with a response that wasn't really an answer. Mion didn't hound me anymore after that. All right, this time for real. Good night. I don't know why you're giving me that the same phone call as Satoshi Kun did, but. Yeah, never mind. No, please tell him all. Be sh just tell him. Don't get any crazy ideas. It'd be f it'd be a fruitless effort, but I mean, I would appreciate the attempt, regardless. Yeah, never mind. I'm sorry. Good night. I'm hanging up. Click. Satoshi Hoju. Just who are you? I scorned you as a coward who ran away, abandoning his sister. I always thought you didn't have the right to call yourself her Nini. But now I didn't know what to think. Or is she was Sama's curse on the fourth year? Their aunt's death and Satoshi's disappearance. And now me, me, trying to carry out carry out Orishiro Sama's curse on the fifth. Oddly enough, what I was going to do overlapped perfectly with Satoshi. The day before the curse, just like Chapter One. No, that well, technically it was after the festival, but I mean the similarities are still there. No, that wasn't all. If we start back from Satoki, back from Satoko being abused, then I'd have been overlapping with Satoshi for days already. When I talked to Mion before, she asked me if I was Satoshi. If that was the first impression a third party like Mion got, then it was probably true. Then as Satoshi had accomplished. I would succeed in the murder. But that was the extent to which we overlapped. I was far calmer than Satoshi. And more calculating. I could actually grow calmer. The more enthusiastic I became. That's why I, couldn't, I wouldn't follow in Satoshi's footsteps. I would snip him cleanly out of the world and then get our peaceful life back. Maybe Satoshi has been with me ever since I chose to use Satoshi's bat as my weapon. No, maybe even longer than that. When I decided I'd be her Nini, maybe Satoshi had been residing within me then too. Satoshi, were you really a coward? Or are you a true Nini -ni even now, the kind worthy of Satoko's love? I never met him, never spoken to him, didn't even know his face, and yet I felt so connected to him. I never felt that way before. New tips unlocked. Note on the housewife murder case. Well, if there's, a, if, well, if there's any clues that could really point to what actually happened in that case, it would probably be in here, wouldn't it? For the attention of those on the housewife slaughter incident case. 
July blank, 1982. Okinomiya Police Station, 1st Investigative Division. Chief Ta uh, Takasugi, blank prefecture, police headquarters for the eradication of drug-related crime. Shishiboni Branch Head, blank blank, regarding incident, blank, designed as undercover investigation. This message is to inform you that a section of the testimony records of an incident under this police headquarters jurisdiction has been found. That is thought to be related to the undercover investigation of the incident in question. Okinomiya Police Station X, Hinamazawa Village, Housewife Slaughter, Slaughter Incident. During investigation of suspect blank blank, who was arrested for possession of illegal drugs, there was testimony related to the crime in question, and as part of it, we learned that the criminal had information only he could have known. Therefore, this record of testimony, duplicate attached, will be provided to you. If this testimonial is to be believed, then there, then there is an extremely high chance that suspect blank blank was the culprit behind the incident in question. In addition, the head investigator on the case received this report and inquired as to the incident with the Okinomiya Police Station. But the responsible party, Okinomiya Station, who responded to the designated undercover investigation announced by the Prefectural Police, Police's General Director on July 1st, 1982, Osa. Osamu uh, Fusakane, B1-12, B misunderstood and did not explain the incident's existence to the head investigator on the case properly. Because of this, the case's head investigator was not aware of the importance of the testimony as it related to the case in question, and as a result, was negligent when combing the scene. We apologize for having left it in the dark until now. In addition, there was a postscript saying that suspect blank blank died while in confinement yesterday. Wait, you mean a suspect, the suspect, the, the deviant that you captured? What the hell happened to him? How, why'd he die? My first thought is cover up, but uh, but then I would think, what would what would be cover? What exactly would be covered up? Satoshi possibly actually being the one to have killed his aunt. Because if that's the case, who would benefit from covering that up? Not the Sonazakis or anything like that. So I don't know. Well, I was hoping for I was hoping for something that could give me a very important clue that could help me piece together some more stuff, but all that did was just leave me with an even bigger question than any kind of answer. But I suppose that's pretty much the whole shtick behind these question arc stories now, isn't it? More questions than answers, so really what should, what was I expecting? Still, it is very interesting to see that Keiji's actions are overlapping with Satoshi's to a T right now. And if it, everything is as Keiji theorizes, then Satoshi is actually a murderer, was the one who killed his aunt. But then what's... But then... There's a whole thing w that we just read about with the deviant in question that was arrested for the crime, and then he ends up apparently somehow dying in captivity. So... There's something under the surface here, but I can't for the life of me figure out what it is.
I wonder if we'll get some kind of definitive answer on, well, who actually killed the ant in this chapter. Or at least some kind of clue that could help me decide one way or the other what actually happened that year. Because I hate being in the, because I'm absolutely hating being in the, in the dark for as long as I have been up until now. And I would like some answers on some of these big mysteries here. Whatever. I think we're going to go ahead and cut things off here. And we can, uh, I guess, not, then see Keichi uh, try to carry out his murder plan during the Watangashi Festival proper in the next episode. Hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 3. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care.